Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the extracellular matrix, the ECM. So what is, we've talked about in several other videos, this extracellular matrix. In this video I want to describe exactly what the extracellular matrix is and how it, it's uh, related to normal physiology and pathology. To help us with this, I'm going to use this picture. And this is an illustration depicting this extracellular matrix here, extracellular matrix, um, and how it uh, fits into the big picture of things. So here, let's say here is a blood vessel, and you have the red blood cells. These are, let me get a darker color here. These are red blood cells here. And um, there's two types, uh, two flavors, if you will, of this extracellular matrix. It's the basic membrane and this interstitial matrix. Those, is, those are the two parts of the extracellular matrix. So this extracellular matrix is like this, this, the structure that's constantly um, morphing and changing and uh, being remodeled. And let's say you know this part of the extracellular matrix is necrosis for some reason. This is necrosis. And this is gone. Well then, you know these fibroblasts. These are called fibroblasts here these fibroblast cells, um, they're going to rebuild rebuild this extracellular matrix. And the purpose of the extracellular matrix is, uh, there's a lot of purposes to it, but uh, first thing it does is it collects water. Collect um, H2O. So it collects H2O it uh, that and that gives it turgor. Sorry, turgor, um, it, which gives it kind of a a, a a substance feel, if you will. It gives it kind of a, a strength and resilience. It's a, a pool for uh, growth factor. So this you know there's growth factor that kind of camps out here. And it's used for um, kind of a reserve, if you will. And you know, as we go along in this video, we'll talk about other uh, purposes of this extracellular matrix. Okay, so let's talk about. So in the interstitial space, you have uh, these interstitial matrix here. You have these f scaffolding, if you will, and these kind of give a three-dimensional shape for these for these fibroblasts to kind of hold on to and and to connect themselves to and if you know a leukocyte gets out here you know this is a leukocyte leukocyte if the leukocyte gets out here well then it needs something to kind of hold on to and these scaffolding you know we'll talk about the specific molecules that make up this extracellular matrix but I just want to kind of give a, a, a general co overview and conceptual understanding of it first and these leukocytes will hold on to these kind of scaffolding what you know be secure in the extracellular matrix and then you also have this basement membrane here and when you get close to epithelial cells or epithelium um, this this extracellular matrix kind of turns into chicken wire. And if you've never seen chicken wire, it's kind of it's just this meshwork of 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 metal used, you know, to to make a chicken coop to keep chickens inside. But this stuff kind of turns into chicken wire, uh if you will, where it's kind of it's got holes in it, but it's very organized and it's a little bit more dense than this interstitial um, matrix and the reason why is you have these what they call little integrins these little integrins that will attach to it so that's how these cells will kind of stay attached to everything as they attach to these 
they attach to the this um this uh matrix this is kind of this is kind of flipped on its side if you will uh, but it's attached it attaches to this uh, basement membrane and an epithelium is any kind of lining uh, of skin cavity uh, cavity inside your body let's put a body cavity any kind of hole or lumen this is you know an epithel you need an epithelial layer here to protect from you know outside outside and inside the body and so you got this basement membrane that this epithelium or these epithelial cells attach to so that kind of are the two basic parts of the extracellular matrix you have this um, interstitial matrix that's this kind of amorphous gel that can kind of mold and adapt and it's kind of it's, it's a gel so it's not really a fluid but it's not really a solid um, and it, it kind of can be a little bit mobile and malleable. You know, it collects water. It produces this turgor, kind of a you know a soft substance shape, if you will. And it's a pool for growth factors. And then when you get up to like the, you know um, linings of any sort, you get this more organized uh, basement membrane, and also the endothelial line of a capillary. Also, you know, they ha they'll attach to this basement membrane here too, which would kind of help form this um, this three-dimensional, you know, arterial or cap or capillary. So let's talk about now the components of the extracellular matrix. So there are three basic components of the extracellular matrix. The first um, component is these fibrous structural proteins. These fibrous structural proteins give um, structure give stability to the extracellular matrix. If we didn't have these fibril structural proteins, we would be, be just a, a big bag of cells. You know, we could, you know, cells and, and you know, your nervous system would be here. Your skeletal system, your bones would be here. It would just be one big glob. There would be no structure. So these fibro structural proteins really give us this three-dimensional shape um, along with bones um, to, to for this for us to be us, you know, and to have this three-dimensional shape. And collagen and elastins are the primary structural proteins. And we'll talk about collagen and elastins and all these um, elements of the extracellular matrix in, in great detail. Now the second type is this uh, these hydrated these water hydrated gels and they make up this interstitial matrix here and remember that's a gel not it's not a f uh, it's not like a fluid it's not really it's not like water or it's not like a solid it's it's a it's a gel and these are proteoglycans and hyaluronan the the next is the adhesive glycoproteins. So the adhesive glycoproteins are, um, they used, like say for example here where you have, you know, some scaffolding coming up here and these, uh, you know, fibers coming like this. Well, they got to connect themselves to help kind of, uh, you know, stabilize the structure. So these adhesive glycoproteins allow that um, kind of weld, if you will, or that bond to happen. Also these integrins right here. That use that are used for this extra uh, this epithelial lining to be attached to this basement membrane. These are examples of that adhesive glycoprotein. So we will talk about these in great detail. So the first um, fibrous structural protein of the extracellular matrix is collagen, and let's move down. And the second is elastin. And we'll talk about collagen first. So collagen is this, these are, these are amino acids. So it's a chain of amino acids and there's three, there's three, um, there's, there's three chains, if you will, polypeptide chains. And they're linked together, um, they're, they're linked together by, 
um, an enzyme that kind of helps with their stability and their structure. And this enzyme needs vitamin C. So children that don't have good vitamin C um, intake or they their their gut can absorb vitamin C, we see problems with these with these kids that they they don't heal heal poorly. Um, they heal poorly. They have uh, uh, bone bone uh, strength problems or bone formation problems. So they just have bone problems, and they ha have easy bleeding. And part of that, you know, might be due to, you know, these integrins here, you know, um, or some structure right here where this isn't a very strong. So these, you know, you get bumped here or, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you play a little rough or something and then you'll start bleeding. And you see it in these kids that have uh, this vitamin uh, C problems whether it's not an inadequate diet or they don't have or they can't absorb it through their gut very well but this collagen here is a you know they say it's up to 25 to 35 percent of your body in mass so this collagen is very very prevalent inside your tissues and it gives it um, strength it gives it tensile strength so you know if you were to pull this way and to pull this way on this molecule it wouldn't it wouldn't provide a lot of give and so if you can imagine if there's a strand this way there's a strand this way there's a strand this way you know it, it it's not going to pull this way this way you know any in any um way or across these lines or these um collagen fibers they just provide um strength to the extracellular matrix and there's um, I think there's like 30 different kinds of collagen, and there's type 1, 2, 3, and 4 that are that are really common, and um, I think type 2 is most prevalent, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look that up, but there's, there's tons of different kinds of this collagen. Collagen is really abundant. You need vitamin C to... Um, help with this enzyme. Oh, and one thing that's kind of cool too is like, see this little bend, how they have that, that sharp bend? That's hydroxy, hydroxyproline. So the amino acid proline allows for that sharp bend to occur in this triple helical structure or this triple spiral structure. It's, you know, DNA is it has a, is a double helix and collagen is a triple helix and it has adds more shape strength to it and these there's these cross linkings that make up that kind of bond that will are really that help stabilize this molecule and give it such a a, a big strength